Today, I try my hand at making a prop from the upcoming game Halo Infinite. Stay tuned. Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Okay, I have always been a huge fan of the Halo franchise, so I am jazzed to make this project. So this is gonna come in phases. We're gonna start by learning how to alter a 3D print. Then I'm gonna figure out how to light this thing and then paint it up so it looks just like the one in the game. All right, if you're ready, let's jump right in and level up this skill, adjusting the print. Okay, so if you're like me, you don't have the skills yet to just from scratch, get into like a, a 3D program and make a really nice model. So to start this project, I hit Thingiverse to try to find a skull that was already made. And I was quickly able to find this skull file by MakerBot that was absolutely perfect. I'm pretty sure it was a CT scan of an actual skull. It looks pretty awesome. Now I left a link to the file I'm remixing here as well as my own file in the description below in case you wanna follow along. Okay, so to manipulate this 3D file to be what I need it to be, I'm gonna be using a free program called Blender. If you're looking to learn just some of the basics on how to move the camera around and stuff, I have a video covering that here. Otherwise, I highly recommend Blender Guru, who I'm gonna link to down in my description below. He has a bunch of tutorials on how to use Blender. Okay, so this skull file came in three parts. The top of the skull, the actual like kind of main body of the skull, and the lower jaw. I didn't need the lower jaw bit, so I brought in just the two pieces that I was gonna use, which is the top of the skull and the whole kind of face area. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail using Blender, because it can get really in the weeds, but suffice it to say, to do pretty much this entire alteration, I just used two different things. The Boolean modifier and the bisect tool. Seriously, almost everything I did was with the Boolean modifier. Using this tool, I was able to hollow out areas of the skull in whatever shape I needed. This is how I was able to make the space inside of the skull for my electronics, the big circle on the forehead, and all of these little tubes for my lights to pass through. And using the bisect tool, I was able to cut off the very back of the skull to give myself easy access to the electronics and the battery should I need it. Again, I'm gonna link to this file in case you wanna print it, as well as some videos that are gonna go over those two tools that I mentioned. Now, once I was happy with the overall look, I sent the file to my Cura slicer to prepare it for print. Then it was off to the 3D printer to start making my virtual skull a reality. This took the better part of two days to print up, but it was well worth it. Once freed from all of its little supports and stuck together, it was looking slick. I still can't believe how easy it is to take something like from the digital space and actually make it a real thing now. Like, so cool. I highly recommend you get a 3D printer if you don't already have one. They're pretty affordable and they're so cool. They're really cool. Okay, but with the print good to go at this point, we can move on to customizations. Now there are a few things I did in that Blender file that didn't really pan out once it hit like physical space. So remember how I made that back removable so I can get at the batteries and electronics and all that? Well, I thought these little registration pins that I put in would be enough to hold it into place and keep it together. Unfortunately, the tolerances were just too tight and the two pieces didn't end up fitting together cleanly. So to fix it, I had to nip them just a little bit shorter. This made them fit together nicely, but they didn't want to stay together by themselves anymore. To fix this, I decided to use a couple of these little disc magnets I had laying around. I simply drilled a hole just big enough so that they fit snugly inside. Then I just locked them into place with a little bit of hot glue. After doing this to both sides, the two pieces fit and held perfectly together. And it could be easily removed for access to all my electronics. That was a seat of my pants moment that I'm super glad worked out. All right, so while we're talking about the electronics part of it, um, I want to have a switch on the outside of the skull so I could turn the lights on and off without opening the whole thing up. I end up settling on this satisfying little clicky button here, thinking that I can add it to where the spinal cord would go on the skull. Now this switch has these little nuts here that I figured I could mount in place somehow so that it can actually screw onto the back of the skull and that little button can kind of just stick out. So to accommodate this, I drilled a hole just big enough to set one of those nuts into place and used a bit of super glue to hold it tight. And this totally worked. It gave me a slick little way to power it on and off. And again, a satisfying little clicky button. I can't say enough how much I love a good little clicky button. 
Now, since I do want to add LEDs to this whole thing, and I was also thinking about putting resin into that little circle on the skull, the O for the oddball, I wanted to lay down a base coat of paint first. I was just afraid if I waited one, you'd be able to see kind of the purple of the plastic through the resin, but also I'd end up kind of painting over things that I didn't want to paint over, like my lights in the resin. But first, I had to smooth out my 3D print and get rid of all those little printer lines that were all over it. I started off by sanding it with some 200 grit sandpaper and then finishing the sand with 400 grit. And that got rid of the majority of the smaller lines. But to make it even more smooth, I decided to fill in all those lines with some paint. First though, I covered all the areas where the pieces would touch together with some masking tape. Then I hit the whole thing with a filler and primer spray paint. After which I followed it up with a coat of black to give me my base color. And this did a great job smoothing out the vast majority of the lines. In fact, the only lines that were kind of left over were right across the face, but that's okay because if you look at the picture here, it almost looks like that black area is like a piece of metal that has that almost brushed steel look to it. So those lines are actually kind of helping me in that position right now. Okay, so now that that's all prepped and ready, we can get to the next step and light it up. Okay, the LEDs I am using for this project are gonna come from these fairy lights here. Now I'm using these because I have them and they're a cheap way to get a lot of lights, but they're not super bright. So if you're looking for something that's really gonna light up bright, you're probably gonna wanna buy some actual LEDs just by themselves. With all that in mind, I'm okay with it having kind of the soft ethereal glow. It's kind of what I'm going for, but um, yeah, just bear in mind, you might want some brighter LEDs if you want to use this for like a nightlight or something. The cool thing with these fairy lights though, is to get individual LEDs off of them, all you have to do is cut them really close to the top of the bulb. Then using a lighter, you can melt off the protective coating at the very ends of the legs. Now you can see once you connect them to the battery, they light right up. So you basically have a string of like 50 individual LEDs you can get for a pretty cheap price. And the legs are also coated wherever you didn't melt it off. So if they accidentally touch each other, you're not gonna get like a short and shut your light off. Okay, so these little lights are all well and good, but the one in the game here glows with this like cool ethereal blue. And my lights are white. So to turn my white lights blue, I just busted out this blue Sharpie marker. Once I've colored in the LED, it actually glows a really nice blue. This was a paint the white roses red kind of situation that I wasn't sure was gonna work, but I'm super glad with how it came out. Okay, so to get those eyes glowing, I took two of these LEDs and twisted their legs together, positive to positive and negative to negative. FYI, LEDs operate off of direct current, so if you don't have the legs touching the right sides of the batteries, they're not gonna work. To figure out which one you need, just touch the leads to either side of your battery and see which way it lights up. Then maybe like color or mark one of your legs just so you don't lose track of which is which. Once those two eye LEDs were connected together, I fished them into the little tunnels I built into my print, which led directly down to the eyes. With them into a position I liked, I locked them in place with some hot glue. Next, I just fished more of the LEDs through the holes in the little O shape on the forehead so that the legs come into the whole brain cage area. There are four of these little tunnels in total, which should give me more than enough light to kind of make that stand out. I then combined all those LED legs together with the legs from the eyes, again, making sure it's negative to negative and positive to positive. Okay, so that little O bit on the top of the forehead there, I want it to look solid and in the game, it kind of looks like, I don't know if it's like a glass or something that's right there. So to get that effect, I decided I was gonna put some UV resin in there. I also decided to add a little bit of blue dye and hope that it would make that whole blue color a little bit stronger. But before I add the UV resin, I need to plug up the hole where all the legs are coming through. The easiest way I thought to do this was actually just to shove a bunch of clay inside of there. This will just stop any of that resin from dripping through into my skull. With that all plugged up, I filled in that space with an eyedropper, trying to make sure I filled it as evenly as possible while leaving no voids behind. Then I just hit it with a UV flashlight to cure. Okay, now back to the electronics. On the inside, I decided to use this butt connector to attach one leg of my LEDs to a leg of my switch. On the other side of the LEDs, I put on one of these little ring terminals in order to give a good contact point for the battery. I also put one on the other leg of the switch. Now the normal battery pack that powers those fairy lights has three AA batteries. Each AA battery is 1.5 volts, giving me a total of five and a half volts total. Now to power my lights, I'm using two three volt button batteries. 
By stacking them together, I give myself six volts DC, which is plenty for my little LED lights. I just use a little bit of electrical tape to keep them together while locking in my two terminal connections onto their respective sides. Now, with a click of a button, my skull is aglow. With that all working as it should, I screw my little button back onto the skull and put everything together, tucking it all inside neatly into the space provided. The way it all comes together, it looks like I designed it so all the wires would fit like I meant for it to happen. It was just luck. It looks good though, right? <laughs> And now that all the electronics are in place, I'm able to super glue the front portion of my skull and permanently bond the top into position. And as you can see, I'm still able to open up the back to get to the battery and the switch and everything holds securely back together. That was planned and I'm very proud of that. That came out good. Though there is still this kind of ugly line where the two pieces connect that I have to contend with. No worries though, we will fix that and wrap this project up with a few finishing touches. Okay, so to hide that line before the final paint job, I decided to use this plastic wood filler by DAP. This stuff does a great job filling in the small cracks and sands away nice and smooth. In fact, after adding some black paint, you can barely see the line at all. And we're gonna make it disappear even further because here, here's where the magic happens. Here's where we make it look like a skull. So for starters, I use some white acrylic paint to which I add a little bit of brown and a very little bit of yellow to give it more of a natural bone coloration. I added this to the skull fairly roughly because I wanted a hint of that black to kind of show through. All except the front of course, which I try to keep black in the same shape as the one from the game. For the next coat, I add a little bit more brown and yellow, making the colors darker. And then I layer that on a little bit lighter than the first coat. By letting the different layers show through, it adds depth to the color and makes the skull look more like an old weathered bone. I finished it off with just one more layer, even darker than the last two, but much more sparse. To wrap it up, I just outlined and painted these little gems on the top of the skull with a nice turquoise blue. And look at how dope this came out. The skull bits look like a skull. It looks like the one in the game, which I was so jazzed to have happen. Like, I'm not gonna lie, going into this, I have very limited experience with 3D printing, so I wasn't sure I would be able to make it like the thing I needed to be, which is the skull, right? But it came out really good. Like, I'm so excited about it, and it's one of those small, deep cut things from a game, but damn, I love that. That's awesome. And listen, ready, listen such a satisfying clicky button. Now, if you are satisfied with this tutorial or mildly entertained by my shenanigans, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Now, if there's any particular skill you'd like to see me cover, why don't you leave it in the description and I will add it to the list here. Also, do me a favor. I really enjoyed trying to make kind of like a prop. I don't really do that often on this show. Uh, why don't you leave down in the comments below what your favorite item from like a game or a movie is. In fact, if I pick your specific item, I'll send it to you after I've made it. Not saying it's gonna be amazing, but I'll try my damnedest to make it something you'd like. If you like what I do here and wanna see the channel grow, why don't you consider joining these amazing people and become one of my patrons. They are the heart of my channel and without them, I couldn't do any of this. So I love all of them and would love to see your name added to the list. Link in the description below. All right, well, I gotta go. The red team's been stepping up and we got a put them down. But anyways, in the meantime, keep leveling up, you. I'm talking a big game, but as much as I love Halo, I kind of suck. I'm not great. <laughs>